Ooh. This slide's 100% gonna fall apart. <laughs> Hey guys, so we finally made it here to pick up another John Deere snowmobile. Now, why do I need three? You know, you, you never have too many spares, I suppose. It's a 1976 John Deere 440, it says on the tag. It is stuck in the ground and I cannot even move it right now. And uh, we gotta get it clear over there to that door. So we got a little bit of moving around to drag it out of this little barn machine shed type deal. So, that being said, let's go ahead, get this thing dug out, get it on the trailer, get it back home. Yep. She is stuck, stuck in the ground. <laughs> Holy smokes. Um, we need a pry bar. We got two by four here. Let's see if we can't. Yeah, I think it's gonna break the board. Well, we're making some progress. You can see that track is just, it's not buried, but it's frozen into the ground. And I'm trying not to rip the track or anything like that using the two by four and this pipe to pry it up, so. This has got to be so bad on the track. Here we go. She's free. <laughs> Only took uh, this homemade uh, flat bar welded to a pipe, a breaker bar, and about four two by fours. And she came out of the ground. Hopefully the track's all right. I believe so. I dug at it very carefully. Challenge one done. Now challenge two is dragging it over there by myself. Luckily these old sleds don't weigh too much, so it's gonna suck, but it won't be bad. So unfortunately my camera died moving the snowmobile out of that machine shed, but I will tell you that it was not fun. But here we are, we got it to the house. Let's get this air box off and see if we can not bring some life back into this old snowmobile. Interesting. All right, well that was easy enough. We got a choke that works. Nope, choke's frozen. Oh, we got throttle. Ooh, you're a little stiff, but we can work with that. Uh, it does have a key. Interesting, it says it's got electric start on it. I think there's a battery here. If it did have electric start, that'd be pretty great. So we'll turn her to run. This is confusing as I'll get out. The key is like. All right, we got her on run. Hit her with some juice. We also have two carburetors now instead of one. And I got no handle here, so we'll give her a shot. Oh. She's stiff. Ooh. I got a feeling we're gonna be taking that apart. There we go. Left of the handle just completely disintegrated. Found the second handle. Cut this knot off. Hey, we can definitely work with that. 
steering's locked up. Come on. Oh. Let's go ahead and pop these plugs out quick and just see if we're getting sparked. Oh yeah, they're the same plugs. Oh, there is rat poop and everything else sitting on top of this motor. Little gummy. Try and keep the crap from falling down in the cylinders. Yeah, I can't believe I cut my hand open right on that callus. Set her on some metal there and see if we can't get some spark to her. Oh yeah, there's spark there. All right, so we know this plug has spark. Let's go ahead and pull that one, double check that it has spark. And then I'll go ahead and I have actually spare plugs of these. We'll go ahead and throw the new plugs in. Oh yeah, that one's got spark too. All right, so BR9ES. Oh yeah, same plug. We'll throw in these new plugs. Actually, before I do that, not ideal, but we'll just Give her just a real touch of a squirt in there to help this thing ignite. I think it's pulling over super hard. You know it's been sitting for years. Probably wouldn't have hurt to throw some oil in this thing. And pulled it over a couple times because it's pulling over extremely hard compared to the 340 anyways. Like, can't imagine 100 cc's is going to pull over that much worse, but maybe. Let's see what this does. Oh, it ran. I just kind of want to go ahead and get it to pop over. Just guarantee it, you know, should run. Um, and then we're definitely going to have to pull these carburetors off and get those soaking in the ultrasonic cleaner. Give me some. Oh yeah, she's gonna run. Recoil needs a little help. Sorry I got my blood all over it, so. This is promising. Let's get those carburetors off and get them in the ultrasonic cleaner and see how terrible they are. I never even did look in the gas tank. It's plastic, which is awesome. Usually they're fine. Oh my god. That is bad. I, I don't think the float level is going to work anymore. Oh, it smells like varnish real bad. There's no way I'm putting that thing back in there after I clean it out. That's pretty bad. Oh, oh, oh there's a giant mouse nest underneath too. That's a fire hazard. Need to make sure that's cleaned up. Oh, we also need to get the choke. Oh. Ooh, ooh, not good. Give me a minute to process that one. Uh, what are the odds these choke cables come out of here? Especially since they're locked up. All right, let's go ahead and break this apart. See how bad it actually is. Well, they're definitely not terrible. Um. Definitely gummy, smells like varnish like crazy, so there definitely was a little bit of fuel. Let's go ahead and get the ultrasonic cleaner fired up. Drop some carbs in, finish tearing those apart, and see how they come out. All right, we got the old pine salt and water mixture. It is a little dirty because I might have already ran some parts, but here's before. Bye-bye. And this is the after. <laughs> Looks pretty good. Carburetor's cleaned up real nice. The only thing was is 
the corrosion that was around the intake boot into the cylinder head. So we'll just clean that up a little bit, maybe with like a soft bristle brush or something. Get these things assembled back together. All parts cleaned up really nice. I can't remember what size I went with this one, but this one is pretty small. It's everything to basically fit a carburetor, like an ATV, dirt bike, or snowmobile carburetor in that. If I were to buy another one, I'd definitely get a much bigger one. So that way you could do different things, you know, cylinder heads in it, you could do truck carburetors, or something like that. But they are more spendy. I think I only bought this thing for like 40, 50 bucks. The bigger ones are like 100, 100 to 200 dollar range. But well worth the investment if you're doing any sort of tinkering on stuff like this. Because, you know, I literally put no work into this. It's literally just, you set it in and it cleans all the dirt off for you. You know, a little bit right here, but honestly, if you let it sit in there long enough, it would have probably cleaned it up, but I mean, so a much needed tool for the shop. I'll go ahead and post the link in the description on where you can find these on like Amazon or something like that. And just like that, we have two carburetors. So we got a couple issues. One, I am missing the spring on one of your idle adjustments and I'm missing the spring on one of the air fuel screws. So that's a problem because those springs are there to prevent those screws from backing out or going in with the vibrations of the motor, especially a two-stroke snowmobile motor. Uh, so my plan is, is to put these on, get it running, See if I have to make any fine tune adjustments. I counted the number of turns that you go in till they bottom out very slightly. And I set them to how they were. So we should be relatively in the same ballpark. Um, once I know that it runs and I don't need to mess with those screws, all I'm gonna do is put some, put a dab, uh, all I'm gonna do is put a little bit of gasket maker on those. That'll dry up. The gasket will, you know, flex you could say with the vibrations of the motor so but it should be enough to hold the screw in place and that's what matters so let's go ahead and throw these back on and get some fuel lines running just finished up all the fuel lines we got a fuel filter hiding somewhere down there that you can't see because it's buried oh barely peeking through right there and then i have the fuel lines ran to a gas can over here actually because we need to run to the car wash and clean out the original gas can. I tried putting some cleaner and stuff in it, but it is plastic and it just won't, something's sitting in the bottom of it. Power washer would be the solution to that. For now, we're gonna go ahead and hit it with some juice and see if that fuel pump works. If it doesn't, well, it should be for sale. <laughs> Let's see if it runs. for so long it's it's literally falling apart <laughs> the choke lever just snapped on it so now we don't have any choke hey it ran for a minute uh needed throttle so definitely gonna have to throw some adjustment in there but we got feel all the way to the pump and I saw it pumping immediately in the car. So, right now, it is pulling some fuel. out the garage in here but uh yeah it seemed all right i did get the clutch to engage a couple of times it basically created a giant dust storm because the belt's so dry <laughs> it's probably just gonna blow in the first pull i do have a new one already good news is that fuel pump is working so far bad news did break the choke lever so might see if we can't rig up some vice grips or something because we're probably going to need that when we head over to Wisconsin. Next step, 
Let's head to the car wash and go spray out the inside of that tank and get it clean. power washer with the tank. It's eh, okay. <laughs> we have our inlet there, our fuel line. I do have this inline filter. It's probably just gonna get clogged and run like ass, but you know, at least we tried <laughs> to do this right. So all we need to do is hook that back up. And then you saw our choke lever broke. So we're gonna have to rig something up because I'm definitely gonna need choke for when we're in the colder temperatures this weekend. I need to pull the pull cord assembly off there. It works and everything. You know, you gotta kinda give it a little bit of action there to go back in, but when that gets cold, it's gonna be even worse. So just gonna pull it apart, clean everything out with some brake cleaner. I did get the radiator cap off and it just looks real nice in here oh yeah yep that's I don't see nothing all right so you might be asking how in the hell are we gonna fix that well you could buy a new one or you could just cut it off because you know who needs fuel level all right we're all about fixing stuff around here so I just discovered something and I'm getting ready to put the seat on. Pull this up. There's literally a seat cover over top of a seat cover here. And it looks good underneath. Let's check it out. <laughs> Ouch. No way. Look at this. Peeled up on the side, but now it's got some grip on it. All right, so pretty much both seats are screwed. They don't want to bolt down, and you know I thought about just drilling some holes from the ratchet strap called it good, but made the executive decision. I went and got some hardware here, and basically all this is is a strip of wood, like half inch wood on both sides of the seat and there's basically like wing nuts that they must have grooved out on the other side basically where your track is there's a bolt that comes up through there and screws into there well these sleds are 50 years old and clearly the water has got the best of them and that one doesn't even have any of it left so I wasn't sure actually how this one mounted but this one did kind of still come apart okay, but now I can't get it to bolt back on and I'm having the same issue as this 340. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a knife, get these sliced off of here because they're also glued on. And I got some half inch or three quarter inch plywood we'll use. Redo the strips, mark out the holes on both, both sides. And then I got these that basically you just drill your hole to match the size and you turn it around and you just tap it down in the wood and then it doesn't move. Let's go ahead and get to work and see if we can't get these peeled off of here. There we go. Oh yeah, they basically have like, oh, I think it's the same thing. With just some giant staples holding it in, but rotted out. And you can kind of see this had a couple fingers off of here. And basically, all that does, those little tabs to hold the front down. So, what I'm going to do is take this piece out, lay it on some plywood, trace it, and cut it out. Step one, get yourself some wood. And the proper tools. All we're gonna do is, yep, uh-huh. 
Yeah, we'll call that good. We'll give that a little bit of mark there. And mark here. Mark there. Kind of like so. Got our speed square on there. Just kind of get some ideas. And, yep. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you get the idea. Oh, she moved on me. This is exactly how they did it back in the day. They just got a case of beer, laid out some wood on the front of the sled, and be like, all right, let's make a seat. <laughs> I already lost one more. Oh, there we go. Uh-huh. We'll see how, how wide did they have it. Yep, two and a quarter. Come over here, mark that. Boom. Now we need a straight edge. Alright, got our straight edge that I've probably bet more times than actually used it for the proper thing. Uh-huh, yep, there we go, oh, close enough, there we go, now I just gotta make two of those, why does it look wider? <laughs> show cars here. We're, yeah, I just had this laying around for something. Look at that. Five minutes, boom. New seat base. New seat wood base. Oh, we also pull this out. Basically. Um, Alright, we'll just do this. Mark here. It's in the middle, so all we gotta do is measure our measure our distance, divide it by two, throw some math in the video now. Alright, what we got? Two and a quarter. So right there. We'll go ahead and drill. We know what size was that? Five sixteenths. Done. I'm going to take one of these fancy little things here and hope it fits. Got our hole drilled, definitely not centered, uh, so that's good. Well, this thing's got you know, that, whatever. And... and just like that, we are good to go. We just got to glue this back on. So I'm going to spray the, the bottom of these and spray the seat itself because there's really nothing to attach it to the seat or the foam. But once we get that stuck down, then I got a staple gun. We'll put the, the seat back over it and restaple that. Should be good enough. I'm no expert. This is actually the first time I've ever stapled any sort of uh, seat together. So if it falls off, don't hold me to it. <laughs> Uh, I just, I know I'm going to end up with this all over myself. Too much? Too little? I, I don't know. <laughs> hey, 
And I guess while we're doing the upholstery thing, if there's something better I should be using, let me know now. I'd rather kind of use this sled as a trial for before I decide to jump into doing upholstery on the Torino or my Monte Carlo. If it's better to buy a gallon of glue and use a spray paint gun, I've seen that in a lot of videos, you know, drop a comment down below. Let me know what I should use. Where's the best place to get leather for like a dash or something like that, door panels? Let me know. I'm curious. I'm new to the whole upholstery thing. It's the one skill I want to learn this year, so I'm all ears because I don't know what I'm doing. I just grabbed some stuff from the local O'Reilly's here in town, which is what it is, but let's go ahead and get this finished up. It uh, came out all right. Let's go ahead, hopefully the holes line up, and <laughs> see if we can't bolt it down. Wow, that's, that's good. <laughs> the more I keep looking at this, my ass is gonna slide right off of that. All right, now what we have to do, I got some more hardware here. The tail light. Basically there's a small little bracket here that had plastic tabs in it. Essentially had like wood screws going into it. The one's missing. Um, and so that means the taillight's gonna flop around. So got some real tiny little hardware. We're just gonna weld a nut to the back side of this. And we'll be able to bolt this back in and be done with the seat. And move on from there. All right, power tools, much faster. throw the hood on, double check the headlight works. I'm going to go ahead and pull the windshield off of it because it's already all broken to pieces. Oh yeah, the windshield's, or the headlight's definitely not going to work. It's missing a bulb. Okay. <laughs> This slide's 100% gonna fall apart. <laughs> you might notice that we're in a little bit of a different scenery than the garage. That's because we got the 440 out in the lake here in Wisconsin. Um, ran into our first issue with it. I rode it around the house, literally three laps, and it seemed fine. Got it down on the lake and immediately shut off on me. So, you saw us go to the power washer and blow out the fuel system. And it's completely clogged up. I have the fuel line off now and a filter. Basically, we're going to take it off, try and blow through it, see if we can't get it to open up. If not, I got a different fuel filter. And hopefully we don't pull any more chunks out of here. Let's see what happens. So the 440 ran good. Uh, this is the last day we just showed up to the ice races here on Lake Chatech. They they actually uh, threw us in the car, so we got to ride around the track, which was a good time. And from here, we just went straight up to the bar and enjoyed some cold beers to finish off the weekend. It hasn't polished up yet. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, the track will get a little slower as the day goes on. That's the studs and drag and water the track again for the features, and it'll get should get good again.
amazing he pulled that corner like that. Can you see how far back his hands are? Yeah, it looked like there's, 15 inches. That, that, that truck right there, and there's one other one, but he's not out here today. The exert experiment was it a half of years ago. And with that guys, that is the end of our trip here in Wisconsin. Hope you enjoyed the video, seeing us revive this John Deere 440 that's been sitting for 31 years. I was almost positive that track was gonna fall apart or the cogs were gonna blow up for it sitting that long, given the fact that everything else was dry rotted so bad in that sled, but it pulled through. It would have been perfect um, if it had a good choke on it, but you know, we had, we blew up two belts on it. Kind of my fault for just ramrodding it around the track on ice, but overall, great weekend. Had an awesome time with cars and cameras, pull bar and garage. Kevin with Junkyard Digs for putting this on. And you guys for the support on the channel. So that being said, guys, peace.